This is Amaya Jackson. You have been watching Outside the Games. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to Outside the Games, our show today. We have a great guest for us. Of course, this is a, a show that's for the student athletes about their character, who they are. Family's everything. Um, but of course, the academics, we can't forget about that. Uh, well, I tell you, we have a great guest with us. Uh, this is DeVille Dickerson. He is a uh, three star. Um, he is a class of 2022. I would like to say athlete, but he does, I'm sure you could put him, plug him anywhere in, in different positions. He's got a 3.57 GPA out of Lompoc High School in California. DeVille Dickerson, you are on outside the games. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Hey, so we always start out with family, my guy. Family is important. Uh, how would you define family and why? I define family as anyone you can, uh, anyone you can be close to, anyone you can relate to, have your own personal connections to. Family doesn't always have to be blood. It could be close friends. It could be very, very, very close family or relative family, that is. It could be someone you likes family as well. It could be a whole bunch of other things as well. A lot plays into being family. Yeah, and with that family, you know, obviously there's a, there's the immediate family and that of sisters, brothers, uh, you know, parents and stuff that have a, a, a intimate and really important role in your life. Uh, speaking of this, uh, for mom and dad, you know, tell take me take me through what each role means to you and what do they do for you. So let's start with uh, dad first. Uh, dad is really hardworking. He is in the mil He was in the military. He just retired. He's been working in the military for 21 years. So he is a big character of how if you just keep doing something, eventually it'll pay off and you'll have your own set of goals that you need to accomplish. Hard work, hard or not, eventually something's going to be hard and you have to pers persevere through it. And for my mother, it's uh, she was she stayed at home for a little bit and she helped raise us as the people we are, which I'm grateful for. And then she had been she got her job and she's been working just like my dad. So they eventually they've gotten their money together and then we've been able to go up in the charts and get exactly what we want. And they've super helpful, super motivating throughout my entire life. I want to zero in on something that's interesting. I think for a student athlete, that time that your parents spend with you, how important is that? To you i mean what does that really mean let's dig deeper on that subject it's it's pretty important to me uh, i don't have a lot of free time uh, when i do sometimes it's myself time and a lot of it's uh if i do use my free time i have to use it for other things like football and stuff like that like studying film but the free time i do get some family is pretty important to me to like to hang out interact you know ask how they're doing not only myself and you got a 3.57 GPA, man, you're doing something right in the classroom. So there's obviously, when you say there's no time, hey, we know what you're doing with your time. So you're spending it wisely. Um, talking about mentors, DeVille, mentors are so huge because they're the extension of family to some extent because they're not immediate, but they all always can be maybe somewhat part of the family in a sense. Mentors play such a huge role, coaches or whoever. Tell me who your mentors are and why, DeVille. Um, I have three big mentors, along with some family mentors. Uh, my dad, obviously, is a huge mentor, so is my mother. Um, all three of my coaches, actually four at Lompoc, Coach K, Coach Jordan, um, uh, Coach Jones, and Coach uh, Dustin Davis, they are great people, amazing. Not only do they teach you what you need to know about football, they teach you stuff about life and how you're supposed to pursue things at a different angle. And it's just, it's a blessing to have them in my life. I didn't think that football would be all about this, but I'm glad I learned it while I was here. How important were those coaches at Lompoc when it came to transferring? Because you were at North Kitsap High School in Washington State, state of Washington. What was it, what was it, how did these coaches make you feel comfortable? Take me through that transfer process and getting you to Lompoc High School in California. It was actually a great transfer process. So we went from, I went from a school that was heavy, like seniority, like if you're a senior, you're going to play, not really basing it off of like the fundamentals and other things like that. But I came here and it was like, if you're good, you're going to play. Like if you're, if you're the best player in the field, you're going to play no matter what, freshman, eighth grader, seventh grader, if you're the best player in the field, you're going to play. So I came out here and they were like, they knew they had watched my film already. And they were told me like, they gave me the scheme, they gave me the plays. They were like, if you know the stuff, you're going to play. I promise you. I came out there and I learned everything before I came out there. And they were like super impressed with how I knew everything. 
I started my first game as a sophomore on varsity and everyone, and no one in this town has really done that before. So everyone was losing it. And they were like, who's this kid? Who's this kid? And I was like, it was a great transition. And they were like, we told you, I'm glad you could buy into the program, become into the family. And that just felt amazing and great. Yeah, David, we always, we talk about the good, but there's also some challenges there in, in a sense. When you're new to the school and it's say, like you said, that it's something I want to touch on is that, hey, this has never been done before. I mean, this I'm a sophomore starting on varsity for this high school. Was there a little bit of, you know, there was a little bit of heat your way, a little bit, but 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 tell me through, take me through. It's not a perfect situation sometimes. It may, you can maybe code it that way, but come on, be clear. I think there's some there's something there that maybe you experienced uh, some challenges though. Meeting some new people obviously was a little bit of a challenge on top of that, the uh, people that, you always gonna have the the people that think that they're better than you. And on top of that, you're gonna have the people that think they work harder than you. And more than that, you're gonna be people that think that they've been there longer, so they deserve the spot. And that's why it's, the coach played a huge role in that saying like, no, if the person that's in the spot deserves to be in the spot, they'll be in the spot. So that was a big part of it. No, that that's excellent. I appreciate you bringing that out because not always is a transfer a perfect situation in a sense. I mean, maybe in a sense of, eventually it works but there is a little bit of you know talk around the town and and so on and so forth maybe some teammates looking the other direction going okay who's this who's this Deville Dick Dickerson guy coming from Washington State you know state of Washington to this pipeline now let's be clear here the California pipeline is a little bit different than the Pacific Northwest isn't that yeah. true oh yes 100 percent way different in, in what way so what t- take me through some of the talent you maybe saw Maybe not on Lompo, but some, but but I would say not a Lompo doesn't have talent. They have talent, but I think from other teams you played, what what kind of talent is out there? Uh, I'd say effort, uh, like effort wise, like you can see how many people actually like work at their craft and play like at a different level. Like when you go back, especially in my area where I was playing in Washington, there was a lot of people that like they just think they deserve to be out there, and then you come down here and people are out here in the weight room at six a.m. like people actually want this stuff like they want to they want to do this and like we play two teams in our league like one of them has a division one quarterback one of them has a, a an offers to as a receiver like you actually have to think okay i gotta study film to be better than that guy or um, we're not gonna win this game like in your washington you could not study film for a game and just know their scheme and be like all right i'll be fine it's like it's not how it is out here everyone everyone's striving to get something you know, I label some of that as a, as a really, if you look at it, what you've experienced through the transfer from North Kitsap to Long Polk High School in California Student Athlete Challenge, because you're having to make new friends, meet new people, adjust. I mean, go back to the plays and everything that you had to learn. Was that was there a challenge there, trying to learn their system? A little bit. I'd say more defense than offense, because I did end up playing a little bit of both ways also my sophomore year. But they simplify things and then add details that like specific details that make it a little bit harder. But on as soon as you get the feel for it, you start recognizing like what's what should happen and what should be in the play. So it doesn't really come to a surprise to you. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, look at looking at your your time at Lompoc, and again, you only were able to have five games or five games, one sat out, so it was really four games. Did you find it that, that that you, the move that you, do you feel there was a good move for you uh, to to do that, to go to Lompoc High School in California? Do you, or did you have some little bit of regrets from North Kitsap? No, I had, I'm 100% glad that I came out here, even with the, my sophomore year and then this year only having four games, I, I would, I'd do it again if I had the chance, because it's just, it's a different environment and my head coach just, you can tell when someone loves the game and our coach loves to play football. So he'll do anything in his power to make us play and to get us recruited. Well, definitely some student athlete challenges can be the academics. I mean, when we were dealing with COVID DeVille, that was a, that was a challenge because really, if you look at it, the Western side of the United States was shut down, incomplete. Um, you know, you had maybe some towns that were a little bit loose on, on, on the, the COVID restrictions, but in all, California was shut down, so was Oregon, so was Washington. So there were some challenges there. Take me through what that challenge of dealing with COVID and, and really for you, 20 and 21, hey, tough times. 
But 22, you were like, hey, can I get some, some game time in? Can I get some film in? You were just looking for any bit of a chance to get a little bit of shine, yeah? Yeah. So for me, it was the, the camps also. They played a big part of it. But from the academic standpoint, I didn't really have a huge problem because I still did my AP classes. And I'm not a hands-on learner. So being in Zoom wasn't really a problem for me. I know everyone else. I know some people that need to be hands-on, need to see what's happening. But I didn't really, for, if for me, it's not the case. Like, if you just give me the work and show me what to do, I'll get it done eventually. Or I'll get it done as soon as you give it to me, to a standpoint. Like, I actually prefer, preferred being on Zoom for for some of the classes because you you put the work out for the kids and then you let them do it instead of having to show them a way they're completely unfamiliar with but for um yeah for and then for but I understand for some classes that I do need to be in the classroom I need to see it be able to write it down and be able to learn from it I remember one electrician student that I know he said this I mean electric class electrical class it's hands-on you got to be touching things you got to be fixing things light fixtures uh uh, uh plug block boxes uh for power in the studs i mean there there are some classes that obviously are going to be interactive where they have to be i i find that you seize the opportunity though you looked at any way shape or form that you could maximize that zoom world for your benefit is that true hundred percent. You have to take it, even if there's negative with good, I'm a big believer with good, there comes bad. So you have to take the bad and then you have to grab the good after that. And then after you get the good, you have to, this bad's going to come eventually. So you have to believe that, okay, well, COVID happened. Okay. Now what can I do off of COVID? Raise my GPA, work where if I'm going to be in house all the time, might as well get work off of it, push-ups, sit-ups. Like you have to be able to adapt and improve yourself. That's big. That's big. I like that attitude because really things can be thrown your way, negative or positive. It's all how you juggle that and how you handle and get through it. So I have to say some of that probably you learn, you know, your dad and your mom have been very instrumental in how you've been able to approach that. Yes. I love it. Uh, Looking at your academic though, take me through your classes. So when you looked at classes, what's DeVille Dickerson's favorite class in the academic world? I'm a, I'm a math guy. I'm a math and science guy. I love numbers. Um, this year, unfortunately, it wasn't the greatest math year, but I figured out statistics is not my thing. But I like you give me an equation, you give me a certain amount of time, I'll figure it out. I, I love numbers. I love doing stuff like that. Like my major will be in math or in science, somewhere in that degree. Hey, sometimes we have a younger audience too, uh, DeVille. So take us through what statistics is like. You know, give me, give me a statistics equation. Uh, <laughs> there's there's not really equations it's a lot of words so um you have to take like standard deviations and figure out and a standard deviation is like the mean of like a whole chart but you have to find it in a certain uh diaphragm of a chart so you take standard deviation and you have to take it and like divide it by a whole bunch of other factors in the thing but they'll give you like words and they won't really give you the equation so you have to flirt with the equation with the words they give you and i just wasn't a fan Wow. Well, I mean, you found something that you like and, and that, 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 hey, you approach math a certain way, but then you're like, okay, there's certain parts of math that I find yeah. a little bit challenging. <laughs> uh, statistics like this, like, hey, um, if you had four people in a train and it was two hours, it took them two hours to get to their final destination, how long would it be, how many days would it be for them to get to their destination? Um, Is it a like little that? Bit a little bit like i would say maybe five percent of the problems are like that I, that's what i thought the class was going to be like like how much is this or like what is the percentage of this how full is this or if they pour for this long how long is the how much how, how much percent is it going to be full but it was it was not it was not that <laughs> does 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 deville work well with angles i mean you got trigonometry geometry yes do some, do you work well with that too I love trigonometry. I love trig. I can so, sine, cosine. I, I love all of, I love trig. Trig is, trig is fun. Yeah, I know. And, 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 you know, for student athletes, uh, they learn so many new things, especially you've heard words of say, I don't know, the foil method with an equation first yeah. outer, inner last. Then you look at parabolas on the graph, the X and Y axis. So, I mean, there's some things that you probably have taken through your time in math that you've tried to get better at, right? 
Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't easiest to learn the foil method and it wasn't the easiest to find a parabola and solve it, but I ended up getting through it because I ended up loving that. So thank goodness for the uh, the calculators as well. If oh have... yes. Graphing calculators are a real one. They are they're amazing. Right, right. Um looking at that, so when you look at your classes, so the relationship with your teachers are very important. Um, when you look at just what kind of relationships do you have through them through, through Zoom? Um, take me through how important it is for you. What, what characteristics do you have to have as a student athlete to help this, the teacher be successful in a Zoom world? Well, I feel like a big factor is to be understanding, like very understanding. You have to realize that you're there as long as they are there. So when you're frustrated, obviously they've been there the exact amount of time you've been there. So you being frustrated is not making their day any easier. And you being frustrated yourself is not going to make your day any easier. And on top of that, they have to teach 32 times the people you have to see. So they have 32 people in each class learning it different ways. And like, you have no reason not to be nice. Like I've always been taught by my dad and my mom, like if you're nice to a teacher, majority of the time, they one, they won't fail you. And two, they will always be helpful. Like they'll always be like, oh, like what can I do to get extra? And they'll just give you an assignment that doesn't mean anything, but they'll give you because you are nice and you were you made their day that little bit easier. They didn't have to deal with another trouble student. Hey, that's that's a good tool right there to have. Student athletes, listen to that one. Because when it comes down to engagement, that's really the key word there. This teacher wants to find out if this student is engaged. If you show that you're engaged and you're wanting to learn, you're wanting to improve, you're wanting to be better. I can remember that when I was a student athlete, teacher just wants to know that you care. Because if you care, then they know that they'll like, hey, I know they care. I know I can work with them. What about, what about from the teacher's point of view? Uh, what does the teacher have to have and possess in order for you to be a good student athlete, DeVille? They have to be able to understand and listen in my eyes because a lot, I, especially for like transfers, we live right next to a Navy base. So a whole bunch of kids are coming from everywhere. So everyone's learning it a different way. Like when I first came here, we like, we didn't go through the English stuff as the same we went through it in Washington, like, cause Washington has a tiny bit higher academic standards. So like when they were bringing it down, they, we started lower and then we went up high. It's like, you have to realize that a whole bunch of kids are learning things different ways. So you can't just jump straight into it. When someone's confused, you can be like, oh, they weren't listening. It's like, no, they, they do it a different way. So you have to adapt to their different way. Well, I'll tell you, we have here on our show, DeVille Dickerson. He is a uh, class of 2022 uh, at Lompoc High School in California. Uh, GPA 3.57, and folks, he's not done. He's not done on that GPA. He's looking to improve that even more. Um, and he is an athlete. I like to consider him an athlete because, boy, you can plug DeVille all over the field, both offensive and defensive side of that field. We'll be right back, folks. I'm Tyler Hero. How do you see you? Well, welcome to Outside the Games. We're back here with the Bill Jokerson, three-star, again, athlete, both sides of the ball, 3.57 GPA out of Lompoc High School in California. Hey, DeVille, we talk about Lompoc High School because, again, coming from North Kitsap in Washington, then to Lompoc High School, take us, take outside the games through that high school, what that high school is like and what the experience is like, you know, from academics, teachers, uh, just the school itself. Uh, different people, different environment. Obviously, you know, you have people like we're a, uh, a big football town. So you have a whole bunch of people that love football, a whole bunch of alumni that are around the town that support the football team with fundraisers and everything like that. Uh, the teachers are obviously different because um, Washington has a little bit higher academic standard. So, you know, people out here kind of lower the level. They try to help the kids out, slow it down for them a little bit more. And for football wise, uh, everyone is very understanding and very learning. Everyone takes a takes a one step at a time, like to say. 
and everyone around the town is just super, super, super supportive. Parents, teachers, little kids, even they're on the sidelines helping us out, thinking we're the coolest people ever. It's just amazing. It's great. The transition was a little bit, was a little bit, um, I got an extended summer because I came out here and finished my finals early. But other than that, uh, the, we, it was a pretty quick fit. Came in here right before football started, went to practice, met up with some new people, loved it out. It was pretty great. Loved the weather. It was amazing. You know, and academic advisors, they play such a huge role in your life, too. How are those academic advisors and teachers? The academic advisors and teachers are great. They play a huge part in getting people uh, at our school to the next level. They pull us aside, like, during meet for meetings and stuff, and they'll be like, all right, this is what you need to do for this. What do you need to do this? How many credits you need in this category? If you want to be, like, NCAA standards, you need to do this, this, and that. They're pretty uh, understanding and very, very helpful they teach you or they don't they teach you and they tell you what you need to be done and how hard you need to be working which is which is amazing i I bless them for that well and you've said before is that you want they want to see you on the next level i mean at the end of the day they're teaching their subjects academic advisors are shaping you up and like hey this is what you want to look look forward to and get prepped for college so obviously there's an investment there that that at the end of the day that's how they feel oh yeah they, uh, they, it just, it shows a huge part of their character. Like all of the, like they're not getting paid extra to send kids to college. They're just getting paid to do their job. And when they do this extra stuff to help with kids like us and kids to help us pursue the next level and to pursue our dreams, it's just, it's like you are really good character development. The community is very supportive. I think community is everything. When you look at just what it does for the schools and people and businesses, the community rallies around. Lompoc. I mean, you said before, I think that when off camera, we talked about just the fact that these these uh, alumni come back to the school and there's, you know, they talk about their day and what their day was like, but there, there seems to be that camaraderie that the these alumni show this school spirit to Lompoc High School. Yeah, everyone is a huge, like we always have our rivalry game and everyone goes to it. All the alumni, everyone from the, all across the town, everyone, everyone's supporting it's just a huge, it's a huge environment. A lot of people that end up going here, usually like they go to college or come out of college, end up coming back, end up staying, you know, helping out with people. Let's think like everyone knows, uh, everyone knows everyone in this town. Like people, some people grew up here and ended up staying here for their whole life. Like it's just crazy. Like grandparents, grandfathers, everyone here is related. Everyone here is cousins as in some shape or form. It's like, it's crazy. It's crazy out here to see how big a town is uh, supporting sports wise. Yeah, and, and, and talking about this, the aspect of what you, I mean, what made it very easy for you? Because you can look at when you do the transfer and, and what, what individuals reached out to you right away to, to make that transition a little bit easier? What were the first ones? The first ones were Coach Jones, the head coach, Coach Keller, Coach TJ. Coach TJ is the offensive coordinator and Coach Keller is the receiver coach. And then uh, one of my teammates was Joe Schumer. He made sure that... Uh, I fit in perfectly and met everyone on a, on a nice level. Yeah. I mean, so there, there's, could you imagine if you didn't have football and that you were just a regular student transferring, would it be a little it bit? Would, it would be a little bit more difficult because I grew up around football. So it would be a little bit more hard to make friends. Obviously I still would know the moving transition and how to be able to adapt to my surroundings and be understanding, but I don't know. I feel like I grew up on football and a lot of my friends come from football and the people I know come from football. So it'd be, it'd be a little bit of a challenge. Well, let's talk, uh, you know, football related things in regards to seven on seven football. I first want to ask you, you know, a lot of some high school coaches feel this way that, that, that seven on seven takes away a little bit away from what the high school coaches have been teaching, you know, because there's some fundamentals. There are some things that you learn on seven on seven you know, some coaches look at that as being, that's not what I'm teaching. But, but tell us why 707 for you was valuable. And is there, is, is, is that a little bit wrong? Uh, in my eyes, in my opinion, I feel it is very wrong because everyone learns something a different way. So on top of them learning 707, they have what they learned from 707 and what you're teaching them in their tool belt. So they have them both. And on top of that, they're playing the top talent and their area and they building all these teams they wouldn't build the they wouldn't take these kids from tryouts and put them on a team if they weren't a decent bit good so now you have your player that's going out of his way to play for a select team 
to go against different kind of competition. Maybe he's doing it not the way you taught him, but he's getting better as an individual. So you're going to have coming back to you, maybe not what you want fundamental wise, but a better overall athlete. And that's what I see as a, as a, a determining factor in seven on seven, whether these high school coaches are like, Oh no, it's bad. It's like, you, you're not taking the time to invest your thoughts and your knowledge into it. Like they're playing way, they're getting better as people and better as athletes. And that's where we get to seven on seven when it comes to FS sports, sports performance, um, that program and what that's been able to do in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. Um, take me through what that experience has been for you. I mean, my goodness, DeVille, you're a senior now. And unfortunately, seniors can't play uh, under the seven on seven program of FSP, but you're still family. So take me through what that experience is. And what, how would you define that organization for you? Define the organization. It's a blessing. They are great. They know everything they're talking about. If you go to FSP and you're watching this and you're a younger kid, listen, listen, and listen, listen, listen. That's all I have to tell you. It's written on the wall. You cannot cheat the grind. It knows how much you put in. It will give you exactly what you put in out. You have to you have to embrace it. It's going to suck. There's going to be times when you're in there where you're going to be like, is football for me? Is, is this really for me? Is this my sport? Do I want to be here? Is this really worth it? Am I puking up everything I just gained in the last week for nothing? Like, you got to you gotta dig deep in yourself. You will get the results you want if you listen, if you really, really dig deep and listen to them. They are great people. They know exactly what they're talking about. They've sent people to college. They've sent people to the NFL. they sent people to the Pro Bowl. they sent people to the Super Bowl. They've... They know what they're they know what they're doing. They really do. You you have to buy in. Could you say could you say the coaches are in a sense testing you to see if you really love this game, you really want to participate in and be a part of the organization? 100 percent They'll break you down physically, mentally, and emotionally until and if you collapse, you collapse, then you're not ready to for the sport. If you don't, then they'll work with you and they'll move you up. FSB's dealing with some tryouts, my guy. You remember those tryouts. <laughs> I yeah. know you do. Um, take me through what that experience of, you know, uh, speaking of for some of these that are going to be going towards these tryouts for the first time, help these our listeners out a little bit. I mean, what was your tryouts like? What did you experience? And, and, and take me through that. Condition the hell out of yourself because these kids, they are going to do conditioning to the, to the bone. That's at the end of it. They're going to condition. They're going to condition, condition, condition. Other than that, that was the first time that was the first time I was ever like super, super, super nervous. Um, there's going to be people there that are just raw animals. They love football, but you, that's, those are the guys you want to go against because they're going to make you better. You have to be out there. You have to show yourself. If you don't show yourself, they won't know who you are. If you're getting reps against nobodies, then they're going to be like, okay, well, they're not going to watch it. But if you're going against the best guy and you, you do a great route and you catch the ball, or even if you cover them really well, they're going to be like, okay, you guard one of our best dudes. Now we kind of have to look at you because you're, you're a valuable asset, valuable target now because – you just cover one of our best guys. You have to make a name for yourself. And if you don't make a name for yourself, you're sitting in the back of the line, you're sitting there not wanting to get reps, like you, you're wasting your own time and you're wasting your money. Well, that's facts. That's facts. You know, you could think about this, is that the coaches, you know, so many times when things are good for a student athlete in the game itself of the whatever sport they're playing, they're good, right? But what defines your character and who you are is when things aren't going so good. Is that some of the things the coaches put you through? 100% adversity. They're going to make you tired, then they're going to make you work. Who you are when you're tired shows a very big thing of your character. Are you going to quit? Are you not going to give 100% when you're tired? You can have 100% energy and give 100% of your energy, but if you have 90% energy, are you going to give 90% of 90% of 90 energy? Are you going to give 100% of 90? Like you're going to see who your athletes really are and who, who has it mentally. Like you have to give hundred percent every play, no matter what, if you have 1% energy, give hundred percent of that 1% energy. Being a young guy at the time, you know, a freshman, uh, part of the side of FSP and then seeing some of the, you know, five star and some of those in that group, uh, you know, the class of 2020 class of 21, the class of 2020, we talk about Keely and Ringo and G Scott jr. And Deandre Rogers. And, and Aiden Hector and some of these individuals even more, but they were some to kind of go against. I mean, that, that, that pushed you, but you were seeing on how they, they trained and how they approached the game and how they approached the FSP and the coaches. Yeah. hundred percent. You have to take what they, what they give you. Like, I, don't get me wrong. 
Uh, obviously, you don't want to go against those guys every single rep, but you actually want to get a rest against these guys. I uh, take it from me. I just got rest against these guys. They didn't always have positive outcomes. I got my entire sleeve ripped off, whole arm sleeve, went up to press G. Scott Jr., entire sleeve ripped off, and then gave it back to me. You're going to get embarrassed. You're going to you're going to fall, you're going to fall over. You're going to get routed. You're going to, you're going to drop a ball. Like you're, it's going to happen, but learn to embrace it. Learn to be like, okay, I need to get better at this. I need to get better at this. And if you go against those guys, you'll be able to cover them better. Like I think now, like I, the first time I covered them, I was like, okay, not a chance. But the slowly more I started to play with them, the slowly more I could compete against them. I'm like, okay, no, maybe I, I, we both wake up and put our draws on the same every morning, one leg at a time. Like we're, but we're, we're people are people. I mean, the thing was, too, is that you felt that, hey, the more time I get to train with these ones, the better I'll get. Did you find that out, that that was kind of the case for you? 100%. You have to you have to train yourself to learn different things at different times as well because you're doing these one-on-ones and you're doing these seven-on-sevens. Those are two different things as well. You have your one-on-one footwork and your seven-on-seven footwork. You have to be patient because this is with a team and this is by yourself. So this is you playing for yourself, you playing with a team. So you have to be a little bit more wary, a little bit more cautious. But one-on-ones, it's like all out. You get 100% I have. Now, I could say you remember tryouts and camps when it came to weather. I mean, yes. the image I have right now was when I talked to Keely Ringo one time. It was cold as heck. Uh, people wearing pretty much light snow gear. And everybody else was kind of like shirt off, uh, <laughs> nothing on their head. Uh, you could see, you know, talk people talking, steam coming out of their mouth. I remember seeing Keely Ringo going, hey, Keely, this ain't Arizona, is it? Because Keely, of course, playing at Saguaro High School in Arizona. I said, it's, it's cold, isn't it? He goes, it is. <laughs> it's very cold. He had a little little top uh, hat on his head. Uh, it gets crazy. I mean, that's something that you've obviously gotten to see from an, a, a different spectrum as Washington, state of Washington football, and that of California, the weather. It's a big, it's a big part because uh, when I was out in Washington, you don't really see it much. But the more you're out in Washington, the more you adapt to it. It's like, oh, it's not that cold. You get out there, it's like it's not that cold. I came back, I flew down here, and then I had to go like a year and some change. I was like, okay, it's pretty warm here. I came back up there, I got off that plane, and it was freezing. Like it's never been that cold before, but it's really has been colder. But I was used to it, so I got off that plane, and it was freezing. Like I've never felt before. I felt like I was gonna fall off frostbite. I walked up that plane, my hands were numb. I was like, oh, my Lord. Take me through the coaches, though. You know, you look at the coaches for FSP. What they're doing in, in an aspect of the program, there's that. But there's film. There's, there's evaluations. There's a lot that goes into what they do to help the student athlete. Is that something that you find that that program is very helpful to you and what your growth and your process has been to make you better? Yeah, hundred percent. They take pride in making kids like products, like products. Like they will tell you, like if you don't have good grades, you're not doing this. If you don't do this on the field, you're not doing this. Like you have to take pride in listening as well to them. They have the answers. They, the coaches are your cheat sheets. Tracy, Reggie, they are your cheat sheets. If you need something from them, they hundred, they probably will give it to you if you just ask. Like you need tutoring, they'll get you tutoring. You need study time, they'll get you study time. You just need to ask. They are your cheat sheets. They do all these things to make sure that you are a, a susceptible adult at, to a point where you can study on your own time. You can get your own grades in your own time. You can work by yourself. You can be independent and actually work for what you need to work for. Bill, share with me something, though, because I think there's some ownership. You know, you could sit there and say that, hey, you know what? Reggie and Tracy, Tracy should know if a kid is failing in a classroom. Okay, let's be clear. They should find out what their grades are. But there's some ownership to the student athlete that says, I need help. I need to be, I need some help here, guys. What, what is that spectrum like? I mean, do you look at, hey, the student athlete should be vocal enough to say something. Uh, it, it's kind of a teamwork thing. They invest, they want to know, but the, you got to want to be able to get better in the classroom, right? You have to be able to, because if you want to be that person, you want to be this great athlete, you have to start in the classroom first. So you get the embarrassment out of the way of saying, look, I'm failing, I need help, or I'm not doing this great in this class and I need your help. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I actually am trying, but it's just not coming to me. So if it's someone, please try to help me. You have to get that embarrassment out of the way or you're not going to start doing, you're not going to, you're not going to have a great, you're not going to do good in life in general. Because if you can't tell someone when you're failing, you're not having a good time or struggling, 
struggling on something, then you're not going to be able to tell people like it's your job, like, oh, I don't understand this or what do you need this PowerPoint to do? It's like, you, you got you to gotta be able to learn those things now rather than later. It's almost a case of like, if you do it, don't do it now. Student athletes, it's too late. Because when you get to college, it's, it's, it's like, hey, you're ineligible. You're not playing. There's no shot. Uh, you got to change the, the, the pattern. You got to change that. So that's true, right? 100%. 100%. Looking at the, the, the competition that you guys, you at FSP had, you know, you went through, the traveling, the games, the camaraderie of the, the student athletes together, the coaches. What, what was that experience like to go through all that traveling together and staying together, spending time together like that, and, and moments of on and off the field? It was great, you know, being on and off the field, especially off the field, like being up late nights, cracking jokes, going out to get food, you know, walking down the strip sometimes, like hanging out, going to, you know, being, we've been with each other for almost two years now. It's like, we all know each other very well, all hanging out, you know, going to each other's rooms at night, talking about people, you know, getting ready for a game, talking about what we want to be, like what we want to do about our families and stuff like that. And on the field, being able to trust each other, knowing what the other person wants, like thinking, oh, are they going to do their job? And then you remember, it's like, oh yeah, this person wants to go to you. And of course they're going to do their job. They're, they're, their family. It's like a lot of that plays into a fact when you've been with people for so long. So. And there's also moments of human frailty. I mean, the, there's a, there's that experience where they're human, just like us and they go through ups and downs. Maybe there's a problem at home. Um, you find it that you, you all bond really quickly and you really help each other through things and say, Hey, coach Ford, we got something going on here that we need to work that they need some help and assistance. Has there been moments like that? Yeah. Like I said, everyone here is family. So if you need something and you need help with something family related, non-family related, just go up and talk to somebody. Someone's going to help you. you, whether that be a player, whether it be a coach, whether it be a tutor, whether it be a teacher, someone's going to help you. As long as you go up and ask, you have to ask though, you need, you need to evaluate yourself and say, okay, look, I need help. Whether it's emotionally, physically, grades wise, like I just need help. It's hard for you though, DeVille, not to be able to be a part of that. I mean, you're a family, we get it, but not to be a part with those brothers of yours uh, competing on them, you know, because you're a senior now, that's yeah. tough, isn't it? That's been a tough reality for you. Very, a little, it's very tough. Uh, now realizing that I'm not going to be able to have it anymore. It's a little, a little heartbreaking sometimes. Yeah, no, definitely. So guys, we're here with uh, DeVille Jokerson, uh, Lompoc High School in, in uh, California, 3.57 GPA. An athlete that can play on both sides of the ball. I tell you, class of 2022, DeVille Jokerson, we'll be right back. We're all moving at our own speed. From essential workers to frontline responders, to you. Whenever you're ready to get out there, Enterprise is ready too. With our complete clean pledge, you'll have the peace of mind that will get you safely on your way, wherever and whenever that may be. Enterprise, when you're ready, we're ready. Welcome back to Outside the Games. DeVille Jokerson. Hey, I tell you, football. Why football? Why, what was it about it that made you want to play the game and be a part of it? Because we talked off camera about it. Basketball, you thought was kind of it. But something about football. Take us through that history. I was a little, I was younger, way younger. And obviously football runs in a little bit of my bloodline. Uh, my dad played football. My dad's brother played football. Their dad played football. Um, uh, my brother played football for a little bit. And he was a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh, mentor growing up to see him play. And obviously I was like, oh, I don't want to do the same thing he's doing because that's his thing. And I saw I was playing basketball for a little bit. Then I eventually I got into it and I was like, okay, maybe this isn't what I want to do because this is pretty nice. So I ended up playing like I was always playing above my grade, never played with people in my grade because it was too easy. So I would always play above, above and beyond. Eventually I got to the point where I was like, okay, can't really play above and beyond anymore because everyone's getting to the same level. But I ended up growing up loving the game, you know, loving all the games. I used to hate going to practice. practice. I thought practice was so dumb. Just give me the ball and I'll just run. So I said, tell everyone to block for me, I'll just run. No, we don't need plays. Just so snap it to me and I'll run. I used to hate it so much. It was the worst thing. I've, when I grow up, you're like, okay, got to kind of have to have plays, kind of have to have defensive scheme, kind of have to have offensive scheme. So, you know, I always grew up, 
you know, finding a love for a game, it, it takes a little bit. Sometimes you realize you think you don't have it, but it really is just deep down in you. So, yeah. At, at Lompoc High School, so you played two years prior to North at North Kitsap. What was the difference between that for the game itself that you learned about yourself to, to be able to play the game? It's a completely different game. It's a completely different game. When, you're watched, uh, when I was at North Kitsap, I was realizing, like, uh, when I was playing with FSP and I was playing with North Kitsap, I'm, like, sitting there, I'm like, all right, am I, do I, am I where I want to be in life? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? I got here and I started, I started doing certain things, and I was like, okay, this is where I want to be. This is exactly where I want to be. Okay, now what do I need to do to get where I want to be? And I obviously were a huge help in that, like, being able to be – out and being able to be working out, going on the field whenever I want, having field access, working with cones, working with drills. They were just a huge part, huge part in that success. What was it with regards to COVID that made things difficult? Because I think COVID had an impact on some things. Training, finding time to train, be with your other teammates to train. Was there some of that for you? There was, a, there was some of that. Uh, a big part of it was not knowing if we're going to be able to play. Like we're doing all this, like a lot of people were quitting because it's like, all right, we're doing all this work. We're doing all these practices. Cause we ended up practicing for like eight months, like seven months doing all these practices for what? Like we don't even know if we're going to have a game, but in the, the day it's like, we're doing all this. And then what, we're just not gonna have a game. Like we do all this eight months of training for what? So a lot of people end up leaving and stuff like that. And then not being able to train with certain people, having weight restrictions, like you have to spray on the weight every time someone touches it. So we have to do that every single time we lifted. It was a little bit tedious. Other than that, you know, it kind of, I'd say the positives were like, it helped to bond us together though. Like, like we're all going through this together. So we're all even coaches and parents. So. <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, I think the other thing too was because when you couldn't have contact, there was social distancing involved. So Zoom, just like in the classroom, it became something important for coaches as well with their teammates, right? Or their team. 100%. Because coaches had to sit there and bond with people, like, getting their players out. Like, you know, I can only imagine how hard it was to get players that, that he needs out here not to come out here, be, but they didn't want to because they didn't know if they are going to have games. So I feel like it was even rougher on the coaches. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. Take me through the season. So you had four games. Uh, what did you notice about your team uh, from the first game up to then the fourth last game? Uh, the one thing I noticed about my team is like, you know, after the, like everyone was doubting us. So everyone didn't think, cause we were super senior every team last year. Everyone was doubting us. They were thinking that we're not going to do great because we're missing seniors and everyone are, we had a heavy senior, we had a super senior heavy, uh, class. Like I was the only person on my, uh, the defense that year that didn't graduate. So everyone else left, but after the first game, we got all the butterflies all the way. We ended up winning 24 or seven. And then after that, we started rolling through people and they finally realized that, okay, we can actually do this. We can actually we're actually just we're actually capable of beating really really good teams you know strengths and weaknesses of course a student athlete always love to talk about the strengths of how they are uh that's big but there's also weaknesses involved in the game and you're always working on to improve take me through some of your strengths and weaknesses uh we'll take strengths first of all uh deville on on either on the, let's just say the defensive and offensive side of the ball explain some strengths there for you um, some strengths for offense side is speed and awareness and IQ. We have a really high IQ for the game. Our coaches know exactly, like, they can look at a defensive back and know exactly what plays are going to run, where we're going to put the ball at all times. We would deal with running backs whenever we're going to feed him, obviously, because the ground going to go up. Strengths of some off uh, some defenses is you haven't really seen a defense like ours before, so you don't really, really know what to expect, what blitzes to bring. We have some speed on our defense as well. Um, we have some really good DBs, some cover guys, so you're going to have a, tr trouble, uh, a trouble sometime airing out the ball. Now on the defensive side of the ball, what are some strengths there? Uh, the strengths on the defense side of the balls, uh, we have we have some speed and we have um, we have a little bit of we have a little bit of meat on our line this year, a tiny bit more than last year. So we'll be able to get to the quarterback faster, apply more pressure. If there was something to look in your game for weaknesses, what would be one thing that you noticed? You know, because you've been there've been a lot of improvements. But what are some things you're still getting better at? Uh, I'm getting better at recognizing. Uh, so certain routes off of hip movements and uh, recognizing certain uh, routes off of the quarterback's eyes as well. There's something to be said about recovery speed, especially when you find a receiver that's able to kind of extend a route or get past you. There's that recovery speed that is so important. Hip movement and everything plays a part. Have you noticed that that's been something of, of a strong suit for you? Yeah, uh, a lot of co co coaches tell me that my recovery speed is great and how I attack the ball when I'm beat 
is pretty well is great as well. What are some things you look at a receiver when you're on the defensive side of the ball? The way he lines up is one of the biggest things. And the way he's looking at the quarterback is another big thing. Like if you're staring at the quarterback, like giving him signals, like you're gonna get the ball. And if you're lined up all lazy, like it might be a run. If you're lined up lazy, I'm gonna press you to the floor. Like it's just there's a whole bunch that goes into it. But what what makes it difficult to judge a quarterback when they're trying to throw? Judging a quarterback that's good with his eyes is really uh, really hard because they mess with their targets. They make you think that they're going one way where they're actually not misdirection. And judging a quarterback that also is a dual threat, you know, obviously he can give you the pump fake, thinking your guy's open. You kind of have to peel off for your guy because you know he can run, and then he like air it out deep for something. But you got to be you got to be aware. That's what that's where the awareness comes in, or like you got to know who you're playing. Uh, that's where film comes in, like. If you see him looking one way, maybe he's going to go the other way. Maybe he's just trying to look you off. You know, he's not going to go that way. And part of that is film. When you're talking about that's the confidence that you're going to exuberate in, in on the field. I mean, there's a thing, uh, there's a place called Joker Island. And I don't know what quarterbacks like to throw on, right? Nope, never. I died the targeted, I think, under 10 times this year over. Like, and we only had four games, like maybe five. I don't think it was under eight. I only got thrown to like twice my last game. And he's a D1 quarterback, and we work out together all the time, but he just knows better. He's going to Wisconsin, yeah? Yep, yep, Deacon Hill. That's yeah. my boy. Wow. I, your defense, though, there's this first and second and third tier. What is the strongest part of that defense? Uh, I'd say this year our secondary is definitely our strongest part, the third tier. Uh, the first tier, is, I think it go third, first, and second because our linebacker is a little bit new. Uh, our our first year has a little bit of we have a little bit of beef from last year coming up coming on the line so we're gonna be all right for our offensive line but our definitely strongest tier is definitely gonna be our DBs. At Long Polk, do the coaches really look at making sure that the secondary uh, is gonna come up for a blitz? They're gonna show different looks. Your your linebackers will show different looks. Is that something that the defensive scheme is wanting to show the offense? Because hey, they want that offense to guess. 100% of the time he we always we always will will we'll bluff and if we are bluff we can turn to a blitz or it cannot turn to a blitz because we don't we don't really need to how important on the offensive side of the ball has it been for you as a receiver to have that good relationship and timing with your quarterback um, it's amazing yeah we 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 go to school together all the we obviously we go to school together so we have this uh, connection where I always, I'm always around him so I know what he's thinking pretty much all the time he's a little young cat so I know he's a, he's like a little freshie that we like mess with and stuff like that. So obviously we have our uh, we have our ups and downs, but majority of the time we know what we're doing. We're always locked in. We're, we're connected. We've been together for a while, almost two years now. So or actually two years now. So we all we we always are usually on the same page. What do you appreciate about your position coaches? How have they helped the Bill Jokerson get better? Oh, uh, they looking at and approaching the game. They teach me a whole bunch of things that uh, I haven't seen before. So it's a lot of things I can add to my toolbox, a lot of things that I can uh, approach to the game differently, allow myself to uh, adapt to different packages, allow myself to adapt to different quarterbacks and different receivers. Now, again, the shortened season was a shortened season. So you kind of have to turn the page, as it were. Now you're starting to have a new season, class of 22. Uh, you're hoping that's going to be a full schedule, I'm yes. pretty sure, um, in the CIF. Take me through what games stand out to you. Is there a schedule out yet? And what have you? We do, we don't have a schedule out. We only have the first two games, which are Paso Robles and Rigetti, and those are like kind of exhibition games, more or less. So it's not really the craziest. So tell me, I mean, your team, offensive side of the ball, defensive side of the ball, they're hungry this year. I mean, they're this this is kind of like, hey, we want to win a title. We want some hardware. Is that how this team is viewing it? Uh, we have a lot of younger kids uh this year so it's going to be a lot different perspective for them because they just got into this and they, they're starting to learn slowly how football really is and stuff like that but for the kids like for for my quarterback for my running back for me like we've been in this for a while we know what this is about we have to show our leadership leadership and we have to show our hardware like we need to get out there and prove ourselves a lot of these kids we have a lot to prove this year because we again we were a little bit senior heavy last year as well even though we weren't senior we seen it heavy before like we have a couple of seniors, maybe two, three, maybe four. Like we don't have a lot. So for some of us, it's like this is our last time we're ever gonna play. Like we we want to be those people that oh they were right. Like we weren't a great team because this and that, or we're doing it out there and be like, no, we were good because we wanted it better than most of the teams did. Pick out some hard games that you think they're gonna be on the schedule that'll be somewhat of a difficulty. Um, I'm gonna say Pacifica and Oxnard are probably gonna be some of our hard games. 
they are pretty good. Pacifica obviously knows what they're doing. They've had a couple of kids go different places. So. And, and with those teams, what makes them difficult? Is it the offense or defense? What is, or are they a complete team? It's overall more or less like, cause they have good coaching and the coaching, a lot of good, you can make a good player with great coaching into a phenomenal player because he can be able to adapt coaching and take different things. A lot of their players aren't like the greatest fundamentally wise, but they have really great coaches that adapt them and change them as players and as people. What is your goal for your academics on GPA, my guy? Uh, my goal is above a 3.7. I want to get bump that up as high as possible, get that up that way the bigger the bigger academic schools can be like, okay, this kid actually cares about his academics. I tell you, I tell you the, the aspect of recruiting is, in the, is just interesting in itself. And recruiting has changed to somewhat during COVID. So we, we don't want to touch on too much of it, but we look at it from a standpoint of like, hey, visits are, are, are kind of sometimes tough, but now they've kind of opened up a little bit as people are getting vaccinated and COVID is hopefully going away. But I, I think the thing is there's the visits, but then also to the, the attention that you're getting from some colleges. What makes that interesting to go through, especially for your parents and you guys? It makes it interesting because you never you never really think you're going to be at some point where you are in your life until you actually get there. Like you actually get to the school, driving around the campus, thinking about certain things like, is this where I want to go? Is this how far I want to be away from my, away from my family? Is this where I want to study? And there's a lot that goes into it when you're visiting a college, like the tour, like how the school looks, how nice the people are, how nice the teachers are. Just taking it all in at once, but what we're trying to do slowly, just taking it all in, you know. Obviously, we worked pretty hard for what we've gotten and where we've came. So it's just a little bit of a waking call sometimes. How does you and your you and your parents handle recruiting? Is it kind of you just let it take care of itself? What is your approach to it? It's a little frustrating sometimes, you know, sometimes seeing people that just don't work at all like at all like get all these crazy things just because you know their dad did something or they're super tall it's like it's a little bit frustrating sometimes obviously you get what comes to you and we're just kind of letting the ball roll we kind of just let those people you know if they they do they do you know we have some people that we know that are going to be killers coming out they don't have crazy offers but they're just dogs because they have to work for everything they have and that's kind of how we are like I've worked for everything I've gotten like I'm going to go into college just raw animal for that process, has it taught you to be a little bit more vocal with coaches uh, as far as how you approach them and, 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 and your mindset when you go to, say, like these camps that you've been able to uh, go through and, and attend? You want to be vocal. You want to show what you can do, kind of demonstrate your skills, yeah? Yeah, you want to be more vocal. You want to tell them, like, introduce yourself, have something, like, great about you that they'll remember. You can't just go up and give them your name, give your phone number, and say they're going to remember you. There's, like, they have to go through like 14,000 kids, something like that, a day, talking to, talking to them, like, oh, what can I do to get better and stuff like that? You have to be, you have to stand out. You have to have something about you. You have to be that kid that guarded the best receiver. You have to be that kid that was the best at this camp. You have to be the kid that was the fastest. Like, you have to be, you have to have something about you that makes them like, okay, I, I do remember you. You were this kid. And if you don't have something about you, you got to make something about you. It's the kid with the best footwork. It's the kid that was first to every drill. Like, you got to you gotta have something. I'll tell you. It's been a pleasure to have you on our show and outside the games, Deville Jokerson. I tell you, 3.57 uh, 3 GPA, he's going to have a goal of 3.7 and above. Open up those doors of opportunity. Um, yes, sir. And as well, uh, athlete on both sides of the ball at uh, Lompoc High School in California. Uh, I tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be on the show. Appreciate it. Hey, you bet. We're not done, though. We get to have this thing called the Quick Blitz. Get to know you on a personal level. Yes, yes, Deville. What is your favorite food? Uh, Ooh, favorite food's going to be fried chicken, 100%. He's not playing. Uh, <laughs> dessert, my guy. A dessert is going to be ice cream. That's going to be chocolate chip cookie dough. Change it up, mix it up a bit. Yeah, all right, but, but the Reese's, Breyers, ice cream. Okay. Yeah, you'll throw that in there. It's, it's a mix of both. Somehow I like to mix them together. Get the cookie dough chunks in there with the Reese's. That's where it's at. There you go. Favorite shoe to wear? On the football field. On the football field, Adidas, 100%. Low top Adidas. I don't really have a favorite, but low top Adidas are good. Favorite musical artist you listen to right now, my guy? Uh, musical artist, probably R&B, probably The Weeknd. Love The Weeknd. Yeah, he's got the hair, folks. Don't forget, he's got the twisted. The Weeknd has hair. This guy, hey, looking sharp, looking sharp. Um, if you uh, had to wear a shoe that's casual, what would be a casual shoe you wear? 
uh all air jordan ones i have a, i have a stupid problem right now with buying ridiculous air jordan ones problem, I, folks, because he's got a showroom display of air jordans yeah like i have jordans everywhere it's ridiculous i i, I need to stop buying them <laughs> a lot of paychecks are going towards my sweetheart shoes um apple or android and why uh apple i grew up on apple and i think apple has better quality Favorite, if you had to uh, find a destination spot anywhere in the world, where would it be? Dubai. I've always wanted to go to Dubai because I, I watch a lot of YouTube, but I always see like people go to Dubai and it's like clear water and stuff like that. And I've always wanted to be out there. Hey, and, and can we get a, you know, seeing your dad was in the name. Yeah. You traveled so many spots. You got to see some different spots. Why can't, yes. we, why can't we have a naval base in Dubai? That would be amazing. I'd go. <laughs> I'd go, 100%. You're right. What just was, for a minute. Hey, theaters are opening up. What was the last movie you just saw, my guy? The last movie I saw was The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and I'm gonna hurt some people's feelings here, but that was one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen in my life. I'm not a crazy horror, like, I do get scared every once in a while to get a horror movie, and you know, being a typical guy, you know, you're in the movie theater with the girl, you can't be really scared, you know, sitting there in the chair, you know, relaxing, but like, Everyone was talking about how, oh, the movie's so scary, like, oh, that made me cry, like, I couldn't sleep on myself, like, fam, that was the worst horror movie one of all time. I like, mean, there was no no fear. Girls talking about, oh, I gotta sleep with the light on, uh, I gotta, you know, I can't drive alone. Like, there were some guys saying it, too, like, oh, I'm getting nightmares. I'm like, bro, that movie was horrible. Like, my dog gives me worse nightmares than that, and he's not even, he's, like, the size of my foot. Like, that was horrible. Like there was no nothing super scary, nothing out of the ordinary. Things were predictable. It's like, yeah, my mom is uh, my mom's definitely afraid of clowns. Uh, ki uh, killer clowns from outer space did it for her, and it did it for her as well. And my dad hates Candyman. He'll never use public restrooms because of because he can't do he can't do Candyman. And the new one's coming out. He's not a fan. Um, favorite car? If you could drive a favorite car, what would it be? It would be the Camaro from Transformers, like the second movie, like Bumblebee, and I'd have it in purple and green, because that'd be amazing. Yes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I have to, I have to, I have to. Um, how would you approach that situation? Um, I'd use my voice and speak out, because I'm a big figure in this town now. I've been here for two years, been by varsity, everyone knows who I am, everyone obviously knows like the hair, so they see me walk by, they'll say what's up, they'll say what's up, they'll say well, hi to me, and talk have a conversation it's like i'll speak out I'll be like look if you need help i'm here you know use my voice like i'm here look if you need anything you need help with teachers you got but you also the thing is with that is everyone has to speak up you no one's gonna know if you need help unless you admit you need help but if you see someone walking around like moping and stuff like uh tap on shoulder bike like i don't know what you're going through right? it probably could be hard but just know i'm here for you if you need anything call me text me you have my number my socials if you could do something to make it better deville jokerson what would it be I'd have everyone like sit down and talk like, you have to take time to realize that everyone's going through something in their own life, especially with COVID, it didn't really help with things. Everyone's going through something else. You can't judge it. Everyone, you deny it or deny it all you want, but everyone's gonna look at someone and the first thing they look at is looks and then get, they're gonna judge. You're, you're gonna get judged based off your looks 100%, no matter what you do, no matter where you go. But you also have to realize that you don't judge their character. You can judge their looks all you want, but you cannot judge their character because you have no idea what that person's been to. They could have lost a family member, they could have lost friends, they could have lost, they could have been homeless and they just look nice. Like you you have no idea what that person's ever gone through. Pleasure to talk to you, Deville Jokerson. I appreciate you. It's been a pleasure being on the show. Yeah, I also have the games, a pleasure to have you. And, and I tell you, there's gonna be good things, big things for you, especially on the next level. Again, highlighting the student athlete in a different way. And we believe the character and what you do on and off the field has a importance and you make a difference for somebody else um, in giving back your time or the community or whatever it is. And so we, we appreciate you. And I know you're working hard in the classroom. We're getting through this COVID stuff, so we're glad it could be a full season, we hope. Be more film on the Joker himself. I tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you. And I tell you, don't get it twisted. The Joker is around. Beware. Yeah, I'm everywhere. Everywhere. I'm everywhere. I tell you, pleasure to have you, my guy. We wish you the best. Be in touch. We'll keep in touch. And uh, let us know when the schedule happens. Uh, we'd love well, to we will. key in on that and, and see what we can do to attend. 100%. 100%. I'll let y'all know. Take care. Bye.
Hi, this is Alexa Hanish, and you're watching Outside the Games.